Sign. Real injury scare yesterday. Just watch this falling heavily during hurdles training. An ankle sprain means that she probably will have to compete with strapping on that ankle. She certainly looked sprightly in warm-up this morning. Still unsure how significant the damage is or how it's going to affect her today. Very unfortunate timing to say the least. The women's 100 meter hurdles for the heptathlon. Fountain, Eunice Barber of France, Kelly Southerton. Carolina Clough, the Grand Slam champion of heptathlon at the moment, Margaret Simpson of Ghana, Ruxdol of the Netherlands, and Jessica Zelinka of Canada. The big three, Kelly Southerton right in the middle. Another step in her multi-events career, which she hopes will bring her even more success. But Eunice Barber on her left-hand side, and Carolina Clough on her right-hand side. Potential champions. Carolina Clough's left ankle heavily strapped from that mishap she had yesterday. There is certainly a win. Have a look at the two red flags behind the athletes as the officials march away. It's a headwind and that will affect times. Kelly Southerton's best ever time, 13.27. And Kelly Southerton got away to a good start. So did Eunice Barber inside and Eunice Barber absolutely flying. Southerton's having a good race. It's Eunice Barber of France coming through. Then Carolina Clough, then Kelly Southerton. They are the first three, 12.94. The headwind slightly less than it has been for the other two heats. And that was a very, very good start for Kelly Southerton. Nods all around here in the commentary box. We're encouraged by that. And if she can keep that sort of momentum going, it will be good for the Britain. But Eunice Barber draws first blood here in the Helsinki Olympic Stadium. Well, she's got 1133 points if that time is confirmed. And it went very much with the form book, really. And she has run uh, under 13 seconds. But Southerton in the third lane, this was a very, very good piece of hurdling. It's as 13.33 we've got for Southern, that's 1,075 points, that's a very, very good start for her, and I, I would expect she'll be very, very pleased with that. It's not a personal best, but it's into a 0.4 metres per second headwind, so uh, she'll be quite pleased with that, I think. Good win by Barber, though, and she is going to be a threat, 7 metre long jump as well, as you were mentioning, Paul. A lot to come from this young woman. She has a big weakness, Stuart. Eunice Barber on the right-hand side. Draw next to Kelly Southerton and then Clough. Eunice Barber's shot put is awful. And uh, that certainly has been her Achilles heel in the past. Clough is good. Kelly Southerton is solid. But, you know, in view of what we were saying, after Kelly Southerton ran in the hurdles at Crystal Palace, this is a much, much better performance. Yes, it... it I have to say that uh, the Crystal Palace race was not the race that I would have uh, uh, put her in, actually, with Bomb running at 12.59. She had a whole host of uh, athletes. Claxton was the slowest uh, apart from Southern at 12.94. And, as, and, and uh, she ran 13.44 in that race, and uh, it really didn't do her any good at all. They were too far ahead of her. But here, she gets good leg speed, very good leg speed off the hurdle. Eunice Barber's a better sprinter, you can see that. She runs well between the hurdles, gets up that trail leg through very, very strongly. Cliff responds quite well, doesn't lose her form, and nor does Southerton. Southerton holds her form, she doesn't tie up, and that's a very, very good start indeed. Look at the aggression there. Good performance. What an encouraging start for Great Britain and Kelly. The top two heptathletes in action right now. Eunice Barber, 1m82. And the French woman just seems to be getting better and better. 37 points ahead of Carolina Kluft, defending world champion after the 100 meter hurdles. And even if Kluft clears this height at her first attempt, that margin will be maintained. The perfect record for the 1999 world champion in the high jump so far. Well, that bottom end of the stadium is really going to start buzzing in just a moment right on cue the coach starts shouting his instructions the clouds start clapping and listen out for the huge cheer if this great favorite goes clear Kelly Southerton still in this competition at this height of 182 just three centimeters below the Britain's best she really gets the crowd moving. Oh! Well. No reaction.
reaction from the coach. That was a poor takeoff, in actual fact. Didn't even uh, reach the high point over the bar. Just seemed to run through it. Paul, I wonder as we get to these higher heights now whether that ankle will start to play on her mind. I really hope it isn't because this is shaping up to be a classic confrontation between Eunice Barber and Carolina Clough. So let's hope it's not a problem, it's just a bad takeoff. Kelly Southerton. Looking good. Well, that was 1 meter 82, my goodness, it looked very, very simple. This is just three centimeters below her lifetime best. And after that little glitch at uh, 1 meter 79, she's doing something that even the world champion couldn't do. <laughs> 1 meter 82. Oh, superb. <laughs> Total relief for everybody. That was a big jump. So no problems with the ankle, no problems with their confidence, no problems for the coach, and the crowd absolutely delighted at the performance of their Swedish princess. She's matching Eunice Barber step for step at the moment in terms of points. Venice Barber now. We're up to 185 in the high jump pool, which contains Carolina Clift and Kelly Southerton. It's been plain sailing all the way for Eunice Barber so far. Oh, she is so powerful. Jonathan, are you impressed with the way this athlete has handled herself today? Barber's looking fantastic, actually. She really has got the bit between her teeth, no question about it. Of course, Clift, we hope now, has perhaps got out of her mind the question mark about her ankle. It's always there subconsciously. Now, she really, she really did put her foot down. The multi-eventers, huge rivals, but great compatriots as well. Wow, this is a big turning point. Carolina Clough is out of the high jump. Eunice Barber is left to carry on on her own. And if Kelly Southerton can clear this height, she will move ahead of the Swede. So it's all happening. I wonder how high Eunice Barber can go. She could really make life uncomfortable for Carolina Clough now. Well, you do just wonder how much of a factor that ankle is. Caroline, obviously big disappointment out there. How bad is the foot? Well, I, it didn't hurt that much, but um, you know, you, I'm, I'm pretty afraid, and I, I don't get the jump that I'm used to. So, what can I do? How do you put this behind you and move on to that next event? Well, I put it behind me already. Now it's the shell foot. Okay, thank you. Well, I'm glad to hear that there's no real problems with her ankle. And boy, oh boy, we got a contest on our hands. And remember, it's not just a two-way contest. There's a Briton in there fighting as well, Kelly Southerton. But the story of the heptathlon this morning has all been about Unis Barber. A new height now, 1 meter 91. Oh, and boy, oh boy, is she winding up the French contingent up in the stand, high in the stand. She's the only athlete left in this heptathlon high jump now. And she's still in. How about that? And the difference between 188 and 191 is around about 30 points. So that is an extra margin that Eunice Barber has to play with when we get to the shot put, the 200 meters, the long jump, the javelin, and of course the 800 tomorrow. It's too early to predict things, but wouldn't it be wonderful if we had a real burner in the last event tomorrow. Kelly got away to a good start, as did Carolina Cliff chasing the athlete just outside her. 
Miller, and Miller's having a good bend, and so is the athlete inside Carolina Cook, which is Joseph from South Africa. Kelly Sullivan on the outside. Come on, Kelly, you need more than this. Carolina Cook is coming away. It's a very powerful run, and Kelly Sullivan is coming through into second place. That is an excellent run by Kelly Sullivan, 23.7 into a very, very strong headwind. Minus 2.5 meters per second. Way outside of Carolina Close personal best and Kelly Southerton's. But the important thing is she was close to the defending champion. And I just wonder, Stuart, if the wind is going to be kinder to the athletes coming in the later heats. Yeah, it's a, it's a luck of the draw, really. Kelly got away off the blocks well, but her transition into the straight wasn't great. It was only in the final stages that she really started to put the strength and make her strength, strength tell. She's way down at this stage, and uh, just watch the way she comes through on Virginia Miller, the American who's fading, and Josephs, the South African too, who's fading, done an awful lot early on, and that was good. And uh, the wind, the, so, such a headwind, but you know, one hopes for their sake that the wind speeds are the same right the way through these heats, so that uh, Barber has the same problem. Very blustery, but it was a strong, strong final 20 or 40, 30 metres, and that will stand her in good stead. It certainly will. Kelly can be delighted with that run, but I just fear that if the wind drops, it will give the advantage to Eunice Barber, as to Scooter of Lithuania, and Natalia Dobrinska. But there is the result of heat one. Carolina Kluft leading Kelly Southerton by just 0.24 of a second. Oh, and Barber rocking and rolling out of her blocks, very powerful around this bend, now into full running, gaining on Zelinka who's on the outside, and Eunice Barber's going to come flying off this bend into the home straight, it's Eunice Barber of France all the way, being chased by Zelinka on the outside, Eunice Barber's tying up just a little bit, can the French woman hang on, she's really tying up, Oh my goodness, 24-0-1, that is slower than Kluft, it is slower than Kelly Southerton. Maybe, just maybe, by the time the results have been worked out, we will have a new leader at the end of day one, and her name is going to be Carolina Kluft, and I think Kelly Southerton will get into the top three. Well, she ran a fantastic uh, bend and a very good 150, but then uh, the wheels started to drop off as she came to the final 30 or 40 metres. And uh, but this was very strong as she came into the straight in a very powerful piece of running here. And she's so far ahead of the rest, but watch this. It starts to get tense in the shoulders, rocking now from side to side. Her legs are tying up. Look at this, rock and roll. Her leg speed's diminished, and she's really slowing down to come through to the line. And she's chased in by Zelinka of Canada. And that was, Zelinka was way, way down. Let's have a look at this. You can see this a little more clearly from this. Look how tied up and tense those shoulders are. Rocking and rolling from side to side. That sheer, unadulterated aggression. I will get there, I'm determined to get there, and I don't care how. Good run, not as good as she would have wanted. And as Paul said, there may be a change in the overall situation after this. We'll see. Well, her form absolutely fell apart there over the last 20 metres or so of the race. So a little bit of concern on the face of Unis Barber. Can she stay ahead of everybody else? We'll have to wait and see. So there is the result. 24-01, a season's best performance, into a, a minor headwind, really, of a metre per second. It was minus 2.5 for Carolina Kluft and Kelly Southerton earlier. 24.13 for Zelinka and Karen Ruxtel of the Netherlands in third place. And there is the situation. My goodness, it couldn't be closer. Unis Barber at the end of day one has just managed to hang on to the lead, but by the smallest possible margin, two points. And it really is set up beautifully for tomorrow. Barber now has the chance, cheered on by everybody, including Carolina Kluft. As I was saying earlier, if you were listening, this is the defending world long jump champion. And that is a solid start, aided by a slight following wind. But Unis Barber looks controlled, she looks very, very powerful. And Jonathan, that is a cracking start. It is an absolutely super start. The wind is gusting around out there. Very difficult for the athletes to get their run-ups right. As Denise said there when she was introducing this event, you're tired, your body's hurting after a long day yesterday. 
tough to get accuracy and she's done that perfectly. A 7.05 long jumper at her best, but that season's best, which we talked about in those graphics, is only 6.51. So it'll be interesting to see how that compares to that. There we go, 6.65. That's a great start from Eunice Barber. So Carolina Kluft has to f follow that. 10 centimetres difference in terms of distance equals 32 points. And his barber only two points ahead of the Swede at the moment. Oh, that's tremendous jumping by the Swede, my goodness. She really has taken the advantage here against the white flag. The coach is delighted. That is the first emotion I've seen for, from the coach over the course of the last two days. She really nailed that one superbly. That is incredible. I was watching her during warm-up and she didn't look comfortable. She was grimacing. Oof, I tell you what. We've seen those calls as fouls, haven't we? But I was watching her through warm-up and she didn't look comfortable. She was grimacing. And the mental strength this young woman has to come out and do that with that question mark in her mind is phenomenal. That is a huge jump. 6.65 for Unis Barber is 6 metres 87 and we have a new leader, Carolina Clough is back in the... The stadium is really buzzing at the sight of Unis Barber going for her second round jump in the heptathlon. A real stutter before the board. Well, that was a ragged run-up. Gets a white flag though. Only one jump remaining for the French woman. She's been overtaken by Carolina Kluft. Oh, that was very, very ragged indeed. Paul, it's ragged, but it could well be an improvement on a 6.65. I mean, you say she's struggling on the run-up there, but the wind is all over the place. She was waiting for a long time for the wind to change, and you just felt she was struggling against it. I think it's a plus 0 0.7, but it is all over there. Well, 6.75, I mean, that was an ugly jump. There could be more to come. One jump for Barber, and she closes the clap on Kluft. New lifetime best it was for Carolina Kluft yesterday in the shot put. She's followed it in the first event this morning with the season's best in the long jump. She is in great form. Good running. And a big, big jump, but she gets the red flag. She gave it absolutely everything. And we keep saying this, but this is beautifully set up for the last two events. <laughs> what almost was. Well, this is a competition in which every single point counts. I'm really looking forward to seeing that slow-mo on the board. Oof, well, it, that, that's definitely a foul, isn't it? You can see the mark there. But in terms of season's best, Clough has equaled it with 6.87, and Barbara's improved from 6.51 to 6.75. So, honours even, I guess, on that one. Carolina Clough. You see from that score at the top there, 98 points behind Unis Barber. That's a long, long way she's going to make up. If she can match Eunice Barber, of course, the Swede will go back into the lead. So she's looking for something in excess of 47 metres. And she really hit that one hard. Oh, it's there or thereabouts. It really is nip and tuck in this event. Eunice Barber back on her feet, getting herself psyched up. So it is Eunice Barber in the first round getting the advantage. Now Cluft wants her revenge and it looks as though she could well have it a great competitive response but you would expect that from her she's thrown 46 and a half meters this year 47 20 improves that season's best she's back in first place barber has to respond well just simpson of ghana the african record holder in heptathlon and leading javelin thrower so far her best is over 56 meters and that is a cracking throw she could have put herself in amongst the medals here. And a big smile on the face of the Ghanaian. Obviously, this was a banker for her in terms of points. The technique was scrappy, but the attack and the commitment was perfect. 
we'll see the result coming up in terms of her distance in just a moment but more importantly it's the point she's interested in Asta Scutter is in third place 56 36 and the Ghanaian has moved up into a bronze medal position and she'd just seen Margaret Simpson of Ghana produce an absolute monster throw of over 56 meters to displace her in the bronze medal position so she has to respond that was full of aggression and it's her best throw so far but is it long enough nice moment for Scudder lays back on the javelin and tries to drive the hip and the arm through jams on the brake so she doesn't foul it that was a gutsy bit of throwing nobody's got within meters of what Margaret Simpson threw a few moments ago it's 48-82 her best but it's still not enough to move her back into third we'll expect nothing less than 110% commitment here she's 18 points behind the leader at the moment she almost fell off balance there and that is long it's almost around the 47 and a half meter mark <laughs> what a competition we've got Eunice Barber the former world champion coming back into shape having finished second behind Kluft two years ago Kluft unbeatable over the last couple of years and finding herself under severe pressure from the French athlete and what is this throw? It's 48-24. And the points difference has been closed again. Eunice Barber, 5,888 points. Carolina Kluft, 5,906. It could not be closer. Away we go. And I just wonder if Kelly Southerton and Carolina Kluft are going to run together. They've done that in the past during major championships and one thing is for sure Stuart Kelly Southerton has already gone off hard as they break for the inside yeah she's got to do that hasn't she you mentioned Gomez well Gomez is a 217 800 meter runner Kelly's 210 92 I don't see there's going to be a problem there Scooter is a 215 215 92 800 meter runner and Simpson 217 72 so but this is Barbara ahead of Cook at the moment. And remember, I've, in fact, all the heptathlons I've been covering at the end of uh, at the end of two days, I've not seen the whole result decided on 1.3 seconds. And I think it's a great innovation where they've got one to eight numbers on their vest, which shows you what position they were in coming into this seventh discipline. I think that's absolutely super. But Kelly knows she's got to run really quick, but she's a long, long way down on bronze medal time at the moment. Here we go. Kelly Southerton is through in 63 seconds faster than I think that she's ever done before. At the moment, Carolina Kluck is just in touch with Eunice Barber. I think the Swede is doing it up at the moment, but Eunice Barber is determined that that gold medal will be hers. Kelly Southerton is trying to pull away from Scooter and from Margaret Simpson, and the gap is widening. Yes, it is, and uh, Kluft, if she's going to have any chance at all, has got to close down by about 250 metres. They're approaching 200 metres now. Whether Barber's gone too soon, we'll soon find out. Kelly Southerton is acting as the, the hair for her, really, and is a good pacemaker uh, for Barber, and Kluft is off the pace at the moment, but she's closing down. She's closing. This is superb. We said at the end of day one it could all go down to the last 800 metres. It's all coming down to the last 100 metres. At the moment, Carolina Kluft is the world champion. She is going to defend her title. But what about the destination of that bronze medal? It's going to be so, so close. We've got to watch on Kelly Southerton. A new lifetime best for the Britain. But is it enough? Margaret Simpson and Scudder are coming through now. Margaret Simpson is certainly going to finish ahead of Scooter, and we think it's not enough. It's inside 10 seconds, the gap, and that is not enough to make up the points deficit after event number six, which was the javelin. I wonder what Kelly is thinking. Does she realize what has happened? This athlete does. She ran superbly. She let Eunice Barber go away from her. And then she clawed her way back and made sure that the Frenchwoman would finish second.
exactly the same result as we had a couple of years ago. Sweden first, France second, and that could well be the bronze medal, the first global medal to Margaret Simpson of Ghana, but that is yet to be confirmed. 207.96, a massive lifetime best for Kelly Southerton, and incidentally her only lifetime best in this heptathlon, and that is what it has meant. In fact, the places have not changed since the end of the javelin. Carolina Kluft retains her title. 6,887 points. Carolina, congratulations. What a competition. Yes, Barbara pushed you, didn't she, right to the end there? Yeah, definitely. She was great. She did a great competition. And I really had a great experience here. I had a tough day yesterday and really had to keep my mind up and be positive. And it's been really tough to do this accident just Friday. And I felt, oh, what's going to happen? And I had a great lesson here. And I think I have even more experience with me when I go in the future. So you've learnt a lot about yourself. It's the first time you've really been pushed. You've had this injury. I mean, there's so much more in there, isn't there, for the future as well? Well, I hope so. When I'm free from injuries and I think I can do even better. So, But I'm very happy that I did this competition from the beginning until the end. I really fight for it and never gave up. And how does this compare with Olympics last year and the world's year before? It's hard to describe. It's, every competition has their own uh, good thing and this time I I had a tough tough yesterday and so this competition was really good for me to have because of this experience. Excellent well congratulations we'll see you back in the long jump? Uh, no we will not. Okay well go and celebrate well done. Thanks. You will see me in the relay 4 by 100. We'll be waiting for it. I think she should have a rest after the, those <laughs> couple of days. After